Chris Hemsworth's portrayal of Thor in the MCU is a very incredible performance, and a lot of people do talk about his power levels, as well as the character development this guy went through. I mean, it should come as no surprise, the dude is very powerful, being the Asgardian god of thunder, and his design and, you know, journey was very captivating. However, one thing that I don't see a lot of people talking about is the actual guy himself, the outfits he has, as well as the weapons to an extent. MCU Thor, just like his power level, has changed quite dramatically in terms of his costumes and cosmetics, and that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Now obviously guys, this is just my own personal opinion. There are at least 12 different designs to rank, and we're all going to have our own personal preferences for what does and doesn't make a good design for the Asgardian God of Thunder. Also, keep in mind guys, I'm going to try to be not as biased as possible, as there are some designs from films I dislike that I actually don't mind. And on the other side of the spectrum, there are some designs that I don't like from films that are generally well received. With that being said though guys, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I won't delay you any further, let's begin with the video. The Outrider design for Thor reminds me heavily of what the endgame Thor would have looked like if he actually got off his arse mid-drunken spree and decided to actually fight people. This design doesn't look good in the slightest and there's nothing Thor, God, mythological or anything of the slightest about this design. There's literally nothing about it. Hell, it's not even good in a practical standpoint, I mean it's literally just random ass clothes. So it's not even good from like a practicality perspective. Cosmetics, it's literally nothing more than just clothes that a hipster or something would wear. Seriously, this comes in last place and I'm sure that no one would be surprised to hear that. Zeus? This at least is a step up from the Outrider design as it feels more original. And to be fair, I really like how the blue-violet blue robe contrasts with Thor's longer blonde hair. I think it is quite nice and looks very mythological, but aside from that, it's literally just a buff god-like dude fighting around in very little clothing. There's really not much to like about the design other than that, and it offers no protection whatsoever. And that's my look. I'm really sorry guys, I genuinely could not find footage of this, you know, this costume that Thor has in Love and Thunder outside of that tiny 3 second clip and, you know, this screenshot from the trailer. But it really isn't missing much, you know, it's very minimalistic, aside from the fur coat and, you know, the different colour scheme. The costume and design is just really out of place and doesn't look good in the slightest, and I think Love and Thunder would offer better suits literally right as soon as this suit disappeared. Like, literally in the exact same scene as this clip, you know, Thor basically just deus ex machinas himself a better suit out of nowhere. So this costume is just so out of place and not one that I find myself look at, liking fondly. Now, if this was in God of War, I think that this suit would look very much better, but in the MCU, it is grossly out of place and doesn't look right in the slightest. Flawless transitions aside, guys, we have the armored design from Thor Love and Thunder. Now, it just goes to show this design just went very much over the top and just didn't look good in the slightest. First of all, talking over his helmet, I hate this piece of shit. Like, this is not Thor's helmet in the slightest. It is just too over the top, not good in the slightest. And compared to the helmet he had for like all of like one minute of screen time in Ragnarok, during the gladiatorial arenas, I think that helmet was way better. Now, in terms of the outfit itself, I do really like the gold-plated, you know, arm pieces. I think they look really good. And gold, in and of it itself, isn't a bad thing, as there's actually another design from Love and Thunder where I really like the gold plating. But aside from that, there really isn't anything that this suit offers. And again, the reason it's so low is just because it's outclassed by that other design. And I think that that design is much better, which is why this one is coming in so low, unfortunately. This has got to be the most mediocre Thor design I've seen in some time. And in fairness, there's really nothing bad about it, but there's nothing anything good about it either that stands out. This design is just kind of the definition of playing it safe, where essentially everything you think about for Thor is in this design. 
the long red cape, the armoured plating on the arms, the armour itself, Mjolnir, the long blonde hair that looks kinda shit in my opinion. It's all there, and really, this design isn't lacking anything. But as I just said, you know, it doesn't really do anything good either. And I, even though this is very similar to the Age of Ultron design, I just think that this is slightly worse, and to be honest, I didn't like the hair of this design at all, which I think is its Achilles heel, I suppose. Four. <coughs> You're bothering me. Basically take everything I said about the Dark World design and apply it to the Age of Ultron design, as essentially everything that that suit does good and bad applies to this suit. The main difference really is the lack of armour on the arms, and I think that that actually looks better in this Thor's favour, as it helps him stand out. But with that being said, I still don't like the hair. In my opinion, these two designs are Thor is weakest when it comes to his hair. And I don't know what it is about it, but the, just the scraggly, unkempt hair, it just doesn't look good in the slightest and holds this design back. But it's a step up from Dark World, make no mistake. I'm sorry if I'm running out of things to say here guys, but the first th four Thor designs were very very similar, with very minimalistic differences between them. In this case, we have the first Avengers design, which in many ways was very similar to the original, but I think it was a step backwards as we didn't really get to see this design do anything cool. But with that being said, it's again another sort of middle of the pack design, which doesn't do anything bad, but doesn't do anything really notable either. The design that started it all is also one of my favourites, and it comes in just outside of the top 5. But yeah, out of the original 4 designs that all looked very similar, I think the OG one looks the best. And to be honest, the main reason is just because of his hair. Again, I may seem like I'm fantasising over Thor here, but I genuinely aren't. Like, his armour is p really good for all 4 designs, and the armour plating on his arms just looks really good in this film. However, the deciding factor and the tipping point for what, ma what makes this design stand above those other three is just how amazing and immaculate his hair looks, whilst also being quintessentially Thor. Like, when looking at his hair, it's clearly that of a warrior, but it just looks fantastic in every single shot, and there's really nothing I dislike about this design. Like, again, these designs are all really good, and I don't hate any of them. We've moved past the designs that I genuinely hate, and it's only getting better from here on out. But I think this guy doesn't quite make it into the top five. Fighting the good fight for those who can't fight good. At the number 5 spot guys we have the Uncle Thor design from the finale of Love and Thunder and this design immediately grabbed me just because of how unique it is with the gold and the black. I think it looks a truly mesmerising contrast, you know, it just looks so good. There's really nothing about this design that I dislike and it, the colours just pop and look really good and one of the more interesting original designs that Love and Thunder offered. This to me makes it into the top 5 just because it's an original design done right and I hope we get to see more of this costume in the future. I'm getting home if they be true, her heart is therefore worthy and shall possess, for a limited time only, the power of the the best design that Love and Thunder introduced was the base design from, you know, the final battle of Love and Thunder. And in my opinion, this is the best design purely because it improves on the armor design in every regard. It gets rid of the shitty helmet and it inverts the gold and the blue to the point where blue is the predominant color and gold is just sort of the after effect or the secondary color, I suppose. And this design just looks really spectacular. I can't do it any justice with the words that I have. It just looks so good and is really original and it's a shame that we didn't get to see more of it and it's also more of a shame that we won't see it in the future as it's been replaced with the Uncle Thor design. Both designs are amazing but I just wish we could have seen more of this design and gotten rid of the armoured look as this suit in my opinion looks so much better and is the definitive Love and Thunder design. Good. Just as long as we're all in agreement. Let's 
kill him properly this time. I think the main reason I love the Endgame Thor design so much is because it represents Thor's redemption. After watching Endgame Thor essentially just mope around drunk and depressed, it's nice to see him get back into the action and fight Thanos once again, as you gotta keep in mind that he had spent the entire film believing he was unworthy, and it feels nice to see him back, you know, doing the one thing he does best. And he has a really good design at the final battle, with his crappy, you know, depressed beard turning into a very nice Dwarven-esque beard. And his design, whilst, you know, obviously he's still fat to an extent, he does still keep the armour he had from Infinity War, and he looks very much more in touch with his mythological self, rather than his MCU self, as in the mythology of... as in Asgardian mythology, Thor is actually quite fat, so it really does represent that quite well, and coupled that with his majestic beard, this design really does, you know, have a nice charm to it. But that being said, I can't put it any higher on the list, as the final two designs for Thor are just so good. Thor Ragnarok made several changes to Thor's design, and they were all for the better. It, there really is a lot to unpack here, so let's get started. The most notable change being his hair. The long blonde hair was more or less a given and a series staple at this point, so the fact that Thor suddenly had dark, short hair that was unevenly cut really helped this design become quickly iconic. The torn cape was also very nice, and represented Thor's fall from grace in this film and the redemption arc that he went through, you know, to try save Asgard from Hela. His armour is once again incredible, no complaints there. However, what really makes this design stand out is just the way he fights. The glowing blue eyes really makes him godly, and the fact that he doesn't even need to hit whatever he, he's fighting, electricity literally just arcs off of him. Like, just look at the clips! He's literally not even looking at what he has to fight, but electricity is just bouncing off him left and right, almost like an aura or a protective shield. And the way he fights, just, he is the god of thunder in this film, and you 100% believe it. Whereas in previous films he was more of just a fighter with electrical powers, this film's design really cemented him as the god of thunder, but it's still not quite the definitive Thor design in my opinion as there is one design that took the foundations that Ragnarok made and basically improved on them in every regard. Yeah, I very much doubt that anyone's going to argue that taking the number one spot we have the Infinity War design, and I don't think anyone's going to question this. It basically took the war-torn, you know, battle-scarred design that Ragnarok introduced, and basically traditionalised it a little bit by giving him arm armour, a completed cape, and a badass new weapon. Seriously, this design is iconic and always will be the definitive design for Thor in my opinion as it basically has everything going for it with very minimal things that really detract from this design. I invite you to comment something that you genuinely dislike about this design. It's honestly perfection in my opinion, and there really is nothing I dislike about it. Also, just because, you know, I can, let's just listen to the best moment of the film.
With that being said though guys, I hope you enjoyed my video ranking the MCU Thor designs from worst to best. Excuse the hat and coat, it's very very cold over here, it's minus 4 degrees and you know, I'm in touch with the times I suppose. If you enjoy the video and if you want to see some more MCU related content from me, or content that's just different from Transformers in general, feel free to hit the like button, consider subscribing, you know, hitting the notification bells, all that good stuff, and commenting your suggestions down below. With that being said though guys, this has been my list. Feel free to disagree with it or you like in the comment section down below. This has been Lewis on the Gaming Rift, and I'll see you all in the next one.